Now, my friends, I want you to know something. Welcome back, Open Line Friday, Rush Limbaugh, and we'll be getting to your phones relatively soon. Here, just a couple of neat things I, I want to get to first. The, the there is, I can't prove it, but my instincts, my intelligence, guided by experience, tells me that there is a building. Very deep concern. It might be already bordering on panic on the Democrat side. And you begin to see very tiny indications of it after the announcement late yesterday that Trump is going to accept the invitation of the pot dictator in North Korea, Kim Jong-un, to go over there and have a chat. CNN was so overwhelmed by this last night that they blew it. They had, for the briefest time, the most effusive praise for Donald Trump they have ever had and ever will have again. With Aaron Burnett out front, even admitting that it looks like if Trump gets this done, he's going to go down as a great president and there's nothing we can do about it. We're not going to be able to say otherwise. Other CNN guests got close to echoing it. Ditto MSNBC for about an hour. And then after that, it's like they all got a memo and were threatened with being thrown out of the club if they didn't shape up. And after the first hour, they all began to talk about Trump doesn't know what he's doing. Kim Jong-un is playing Trump. Trump, Kim Jong-un, him, oh my God, this is going to be a disaster. Trump doesn't know what he's doing. Trump doesn't study. Trump has no idea. The Obama team spent years months preparing for, for 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 talks with North Korea and out of desperate and, and Trump's going to go in there in a couple of months oh no it's going to be a disaster but that one hour where for some reason they were unable to do anything but praise this is what tells me real panic is setting and there's by the way there's other evidence of it too which we'll get to as the program unfolds Remember on Tuesday, they were supposed to make Texas blue. The primary in Texas was supposed to spell the end of Ted Cruz and the end of Republicans is going to be a blue wave. Democrats motivated, inspired by hatred and outrage were going to show up and they were going to just smother the Republican turnout. And it didn't happen. Republican turnout was a record high much larger than the Democrat turnout. Disappointing, shocking, stunning. They create these fantasies that they then live in. And then reality sets in like a whole car, cold truth, and they just can't deal with it. And then a poll that they all trust came out and showed the Democrats are trailing big time in five or six Senate races, Democrat incumbents, where Trump's approval number in those states is even higher than the, the percentage of the vote he got in 2016. There is real panic over this, despite their ongoing confidence that they're going to be getting rid of Trump sometime this summer. Let me tell you something else, by the way, on this Russiagate thing. I believe now, I've had it reliably, let me, I can reliably tell you that I have learned, I believe that the original objective of the Trump-Russia collusion was to be able, was to get rid of Trump by July of 2017. I think that was the objective, and I think that's what they all thought they were going to be able to do. This entirely made-up story that is perhaps one of the biggest political scandals of our lifetimes, ladies and gentlemen, I believe the people practicing it, the people engaged in it, which includes the intelligence community and the American media working hand-in-hand, hand, I believe they believed they were going to get rid of Trump by last summer. And that hasn't happened, obviously. And that whole thing has produced a big fat zero. Now, they may believe they're winning the day-to-day -day, uh, perception war with the drive-by media. 
but they are not causing Trump to lose any of his support. His support is growing. His approval numbers are growing. The frustration, anger, and hatred on the left is what's growing. And it's expanding. And that kind of poison is not helpful. But it is growing. They are not meeting their expectations. They are not accomplishing what they set out to do. Remember, these are the people in the establishment. They run the show. They're not used to not getting their way. They're not used to accomplishing what they set out to accomplish, particularly within the boundaries of the ruling class. Trump is still there and they're beside themselves. They're now throwing it up against the wall. There's nothing to this scandal, but they're still trying to make it look like there is. Now this announcement on North Korea, and Trump's not supposed to be able to do this. Only really smart people like Obama and Madeleine Albright are supposed to be able to do this. Trump can't do this. What in the hell is happening, they're asking themselves. Why didn't Kim Jong-un ask to meet with Obama? That's who he should have wanted to talk to. Obama's Mr. Wizard. Obama's the wizard of smart. That's who Kim Jong-un should have wanted to talk to. I think he did, and Obama said no. Not sure which, I'm not sure which of that, but but they're offended. This None of this should be happening. The economy shouldn't be doing what it's doing under Trump because Trump's an idiot, doesn't know what he's doing. Trump's a bull in a china shop. Trump's an embarrassment. Trump is literally blowing up so much of what they believe, so much of what they think they've established and etched in stone. He's blowing it up. And they are unable to deal with this. Byron York tweeted yesterday a reminder about one of the jokes Trump told at the gridiron dinner on Saturday night. Trump actually told a joke at the gridiron dinner about Kim Jong-un. I won't rule out direct talks with Kim Jong-un. I just won't. As far as the risk of dealing with a madman's concerned, that's his problem, not mine. Self-deprecating humor of the first order. Comically funny and hilarious Trump making fun of himself. But you know what makes great comedy? The truth. The element of truth is what makes comedy edgy and laughingly fun. So let's go to this program. Rewinding the hands of time. April 11th, 2017. I was asked my opinion on Trump's approach to North Korea. I learned about here. This little Kim guy had been launching his putrid little missiles trying to hit us for how many years now? And then his father prior to that. And they keep plunking in the Pacific Ocean someplace. Look, keep aiming, little Kim. I think our message is keep aiming, little Kim. And if you get close to us, you're going to pay the price for it. The North Koreans should have been taken out years ago. Clinton should have taken them out. You remember Madeleine Albright and some of the ridiculous things she said about the North Koreans? And then it continued with uh, the Bush administration really just huffed and puffed. I think what Trump is employing, and you leftists ought to love this. I think Trump is employing the madman strategy. I think he's trying, these are genuine madmen in North Korea. These people are literally off the charts insane. And it might be something as simple as inbreeding. Who the hell knows? These people are odd. You have to admit it, folks. So Trump may be thinking, you know what? I'm going to make them think I'm unpredictable. I'm going to make them think that I am a madman. I'm going to reverse the table on them. And I'm going to make them think I'm the one that's unpredictable because they have been able to launch their putrid little missiles here for decades with the knowledge that nobody's going to do anything about it. Bingo. Bingo. And what's Trump joke about Saturday night? I won't rule out direct talks with Kim Jong-un. I just won't. As far as the risk of dealing with a madman's concern, that's his problem, not mine. I knew it. Folks, I knew it. That's why I said it in April of last year, April of 2017. And what has happened when Trump calls the guy Rocket Man? When Trump threatens to fire back, when Trump says his button is bigger than Kim Jong-un's? Remember Kim Jong-un? after a couple of these episodes, actually called some people in Washington, D.C. and asked them, who is this guy? 
ask them for help in understanding Donald Trump. Trump purposely portrayed himself as unpredictable and more maybe off the charts than Kim Jong-un even is. All Kim Jong-un knew prior to that was these buttoned-down ruling class guys like Obama, fastidious, sophisticated, crease in the slacks, you know, that kind of stuff. The striped pants crowd in the, from, the, from the State Department, Madeleine Albright waddling around over there, huffing and puffing and doing nothing. And here comes somebody who's firing it right back and says, hey, if you do it one more time, you're not going to exist. And I don't care what China thinks. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. There's no question in my mind it works. So late yesterday afternoon, outside the White House, the South Korean National Security Advisor, Chung Wee Young, spoke to reporters about his meeting with the Trumpster. I explained to President Trump that his leadership and his maximum pressure policy, together with international solidarity, brought us to this juncture. I expressed President Moon Jae-in's personal gratitude for President Trump's leadership. Kim Jong-un said he is committed to denuclearization. Kim pledged that North Korea will refrain from any further nuclear or missile tests. He understands that the routine joint military exercises between the Republic of Korea and the United States must continue. And he expressed his eagerness to meet President Trump as soon as possible. Yeah. President Trump appreciated the briefing and said he would meet Kim Jong-un by May to achieve permanent denuclearization. I explained to President Trump that his leadership and his maximum pressure policy, together with international solidarity, brought us to this juncture. It's yet another thing that would not have happened had Hillary Clinton won or had any of the other Republicans running against Trump. This probably wouldn't have. Now, again, we can't say how it's going to end up. We don't know what's going to happen here. But the left is panicky and upset and totally discombobulated by this. None of this was supposed to even be possible. None of it. And there's much more to this. And, of course, there's even more, and it's fabulous as we begin to chalk up and note the Democrat reactions to this. Whoa, hang on, we'll be right back. Here's Aaron Burnett. Last night on CNN's Aaron Burnett out front during a discussion about the, oh my God, Trump's gonna meet with Kim Jong-un? How the hell is that happening? Just an extraordinary evening and of course opening the door to the big question. If President Trump can truly solve this problem, that would be going down as a great president. And there's no way around that. That is the reality here. Oh, my. Oh, no. They. Ha I mean, there was panic behind the scenes at CNN. They, she didn't say that, did she? So they spent the rest of the night basically unsaying it. And then they unsaid it over. Well, even at MSNBC, they had, a, they had a slip and started talking about potential greatness here until they... Somebody sent them, the, I'm, I'm sure a fax or a, a, an email or something, a message went out. And when these people are left to their own devices without whoever they hear from some central headquarters, you know, you do get a wide disparity of thought. But when the memo goes out the way they're all going to treat it, then it all changes and they all start sounding the same. And it took about a half hour for that to happen. Hi, welcome back. On the cutting edge, El Rushmore having more fun than a human being should be allowed to have. Okay, to the audio sound bites. Um, we we uh, we left off here with oh what, what did I do with what did I do with what whoa. yeah keep number twenty two standing by we'll get to it in order I want to resume here at audio summit number four we just finished with Aaron Burnett CNN out front last night this is after Trump's announced acceptance of invitation from Kim Jong Un of North Korea to have a sit down powwow in May and media freaking out over this. Their initial reaction was, oh, my God, oh, my God, if Trump pulls this off, why, he could go down as a really great president. There's no way around that. That's the reality here. That's what Aaron Burnett said. Even some people over at PMSNBC said that. But 
that was before the memo instructing them all what to say had gone out. Later, the memo went out. We now have a montage of various sophisticated experts who decided to weigh in on this uh, this whole thing. We have presidential historian Michael Beschloss, somebody named Will Ripley at CNN, James Clapper, Director of National Intelligence Obama, uh, some CNN reporters, uh, Leon Panetta. There's a whole bunch of people here. And here's how this montage sounds. For Kim, this is a dream come true. He's going to be dealing with a neophyte president. Kim Jong-un has been studying President Trump. Kim Jong-un sees an opportunity here. If President Trump were to sit down with Kim Jong-un tomorrow, what would he say? Reality TV style meeting uh, between very different, in some ways, very similar leaders. Would Kim Jong-un view this as a major victory? He's kind of figured out Donald Trump and uh, what makes him tick. This president doesn't read, and he doesn't study, and he doesn't prepare. The president kind of got boxed in here. He's going into this with a bit of an upper hand. To some degree, he's kind of running the table here. Is the U.S. president walking into a massive trap? Is the U.S. president walking into a massive trap? That's an Australian accent if I ever heard one. Okay, so you get the general drift. Now let's go back, play number three for this is before they all got the memo. This is Aaron Burnett about a half hour before this montage began. Just an extraordinary evening and, of course, opening the door to the big question. If President Trump can truly solve this problem, that would be going down as a great president. And there's no way around that. That is the reality here. Can't have that. So here we go with all these people. Now, what what is predictable is these people. Substitute Ronald Reagan for Trump and Mikhail Gorbachev for Kim Jong-un, and you have the same attitude. Reagan's a dunce, Reagan's an idiot, Reagan doesn't read, Reagan doesn't even stay awake, Reagan doesn't know what he's doing, oh my God, Reagan might nuke the world. Gorbachev, brilliant, sophisticated, the adult in the room, gonna run rings around Reagan, and Reagan's not even gonna know what happened when the meeting is over. Thank goodness we can trust Gorbachev to not blow up the world, Gorbachev gets it. It's just, you people in the media are pathetic. You are pathetic. You are predictable. You are the same. You are boring. You aren't even interesting or entertaining anymore. Because you have become utterly predictable. And you're nothing more than a bunch of sour grapes, spoiled sports dullards. For Kim, this is a dream come true. All of a sudden, Kim Jong-un is a major statesman, Kim Jong-un, a mass-murdering autocrat, presiding over a country that is a slum, somehow is more worldly, is more intelligent, is more advanced, is a greater statesman, and is much smarter than Donald Trump. You people wonder why you are not trusted Do you wonder why you are hated? Do you wonder why people question your patriotism? Do you wonder why people want to have nothing more to do with you? Do you wonder, CNN, why your audience is shrinking to the point you can't even fit it in a thimble? This is simply atrocious. Kim Jong-un has been studying president. Kim Jong-un is scared to death of Donald Trump. Kim Jong-un knew he could make a fool out of Barack Obama. He knew he could make a fool out of George Bush and out of Bill Clinton and Madeleine Albright and his dad before him. They knew that nobody before Trump was going to do anything. The real idiots are previous presidents who gave North Korea money and know-how to develop nuclear weapons under the guise that we were only giving them nuclear power equipment so that we can show we like it's the previous presidents that put this country at risk by assuming they were so much smarter than Kim Jong Un, assuming is nothing more than a back alley thug. It's every other administration that's been humiliated and embarrassed, including the media, by the North Korean leadership. James Clapper, Kim Jong-un sees an opportunity here. Kim Jong-un sees an opportunity. For what? 
What's he going to get out of this that you haven't already given him? What's Kim Jong Un going to get? Oh, he's going to get, he's going to get fame. He's going to get stature. Trump willing to meet him means that he is going to gain credibility as a world leader. No, that would only happen if you guys did it. Kim Jong-un is doing this because he doesn't know what Donald Trump's going to do and is a little frightened. Not because he's confident. Anderson Cooper, would Kim Jong-un view this as a major victory? Leon Panetta, he's kind of figured out Donald Trump and what makes him tick. You haven't figured out Trump yet, Leon. None of you people have figured out Trump. None of you yet know what you're dealing with. You are so damned arrogant and condescending. You think you know who Trump is and how he operates because you think he's an idiot and stupid and unable to compete in your league. And you haven't, because of this arrogance, you haven't even begun to understand who Donald Trump is, how he thinks, or how he does things, and you're not even willing to look at Donald Trump's immense success in the private sector and acknowledge that he knows what he's doing. This is, it's, it's, it's embarrassing that they have this kind of shallowness and genuine ignorance. And I'll tell you why. It's because these people have been poisoned by hatred. Their hatred for Trump because he beat them, hatred for Trump, because he's continuing to outsmart them and succeed in spite of them, hatred because they haven't been able to get rid of him. Nicholas Burns, this president doesn't read, and he doesn't study, and he doesn't prepare. Oh, and you guys do, and that's gotten us what? Enmeshed in a bunch of hoaxes and things that are going to damage this country like this stupid climate change garbage. Wind power, solar power, you're willing to wreck this nation's economy for your own stupid, feel-good, connecting, idealistic, stupid ideas. You read. You study. Well, you don't learn anything. Jeremy Bash, the president kind of got boxed in. The president got boxed in? The president got boxed So you see the theme here. Kim Jong-un, brilliant, smartest man in the world now, outsmarting Donald Trump, which isn't very hard to do because Trump is a walking idiot. Here's Jimmy Kimmel. This was last night on his show. By May. <laughs> He's not still going to be president by May. We need to get that. This needs to happen by Wednesday. This needs to happen by Wednesday. And this is also, we're going back to CNN, Aaron Burnett out front. She had a guest on later in the program called Samantha Vinograd. Is that how she pronounces it? Vinograd, Vinograd, Vino, 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 just whatever. Former uh, Obama senior advisor on national security. Samantha Vinograd, I guess. Anyway, she's talking about the meeting between Trump and Kim Jong-un, Aaron Burnett says, you were part of whatever conversations with President Obama. Does, does this feel different with you, um, the meeting here? Does, this, does Trump meeting with this guy, does it seem different from your experience? We would spend months preparing for the most basic meetings that President Obama used to have. Talk to your intelligence community, talk to your diplomats. There is no way that President Trump can be ready by May to have a high-stakes negotiation on denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. Guess what? You can't wing it. Kim Jong-un is going to be fully prepared. I think that he's playing to the president's ego and the president's weaknesses by flattering him and by inviting him to Pyongyang. It is so predictable. Every damned one of you people sounds identical. There's no way Trump can be ready in May. Trump doesn't read. He doesn't study. Kim Jong-un, brilliant. He's ready to run rings around Trump. This guy, Trump, he doesn't study. He doesn't read. He doesn't remember. Kim Jong-un's going to be fully prepared. And Trump's not going to know what hit him. And it's going to be a disaster because you can't do this. And look what she's discussing. You can't meet guys like this unless you have hours and hours and months and months of meetings with a bunch of dullard, dryball bureaucrats who are afraid of their own shadows. Still don't get Trump. Still can't get off of this 
poisoned hatred that they've got. And, of course, it would not be complete unless we added Marie Harf to this. Of course, she was the State Department spokesbabe when uh, when John Kerry was Secretary of State. This was just this afternoon on the Fox News Channel. This is high-stakes diplomacy. What the Trump administration needs to do now before they meet is put together a diplomatic strategy. What are the tactical specifics you want out of these negotiations? What does an agreement look like? We know the broad strokes. What are the details? And that will be a lot of the legwork that's done in the coming weeks and months before they meet. This is the biggest stage. This is going to be the biggest and most important meeting President Trump has had overseas. High-stakes diplomacy with the Trump administration needs to do now before they meet is to put together a diplomatic strategy. What are the tactical specifics that you want out of these negotiations? So you see, Trump is inept. He doesn't even know what should happen at these meetings. He doesn't know the difference between strategic and tactical. Trump doesn't know anything. This is an embarrassment before it even happens. Oh, my God, this is going to we're going to be even more embarrassed to be Americans than we are now after this meeting when Trump probably will give away every nuclear weapon we've got to Kim Jong-un if Kim Jong-un flatters him. That's what they think. And the hits just keep on coming. Here's David Axelrod, who was uh, one of Obama's chief campaign architects in 2008. He was on Anderson Cooper 99 last night. And the question, are you surprised that this tariff announcement was a dialed back, more flexible version of what the president originally promised? Now, look at folks, I hate I told you this was going to be the case. How many times have I said I'm going to say it again? And you people in the drive bys, you know what? If you really want to understand Donald Trump, call me. There is nobody in American media who understands Donald Trump, Donald Trump better than I do how he won, why he wanted to win, what he's doing, what he means when he says what he says. I understand him better than anybody. I don't have to talk to him. I don't have to be in his inner circle. I just do. And I can tell you that you are all as far away from correct as you could be if you were trying to be. You couldn't be any further from the truth about who this guy is and how he operates if you were trying to get it wrong. This was so easy to see, this tariff business. Just follow what Trump has done prior to this announcement on anything else. And it was clear, even in the immigration meeting where he told Diane Feinstein, hey, I'll sign whatever you give me. She said, well, we want a DACA, standalone DACA, and then we want a comprehensive bill. Hey, Trump said we can do that. Didn't happen, did it? And then the same thing happened on uh, another issue up at the White House when they're having a a meet guns, where Trump basically said, what do you want, Dianne Feinstein? Well, we we, we want an assault weapons ban, so I can do that. Didn't happen, did it? Now, you think Trump's an idiot, doesn't remember who he promises what. Think Trump's a liar. You haven't the slightest thing. All you've got to do is read what Trump has said about how he likes to operate. He loves doing deals. He's three or steps ahead of people, three or four, and likes being there. So this tariff deal was easy to see. It was easy if you take the time to know who the guy is. And it was, to me, it appeared that what Trump was doing was trying to soften everybody up to renegotiate for NAFTA when it came to Canada and Mexico. And bingo, it's exactly what happened. And so now, this is why I didn't join this anti-Trump, anti-tariff hysteria when it began. It's why I don't join any of the panic or anti-Trump hysteria when he announces something, because I know what he's doing. But everybody else jumps on it every time. Oh, my God, Trump's tariffs is going to to be a trade war. Oh, my God, it's horrible. And now Trump's dialed it back to where it actually makes all kinds of imminent sense. And now Axelrod's being asked if Trump knows what he's doing. 
It, what, what, what is, is, is he flexible or is he just, is he just flying by the seat of his pants, Mr. Axelrod? How do you explain The this? president got what he wanted out of this was that picture with the steel and aluminum workers. He does view these things from the standpoint of someone who's producing a reality show. He got this picture. He changed the story from the porn star and from guns. The details I don't think matter that much. In just the same way, to agree to uh, a summit with the, the first first ever summit between a president of the United States and the dictator of North Korea within an hour of being presented with a proposal without consulting with your national security team in a significant way. You know, I think he thinks about these things in terms of how it's going to play. The truth is, that's how you guys operate. You guys are the kings of the phony photo op. You're the kings of using people as pawns, like Obama bringing a bunch of actors in to the Rose Garden wearing lab coats disguised as doctors to make it look like they all were endorsing Obamacare. You people are the champions of astroturfing. You are the champions of using photo ops to fool people into not seeing what you're really doing. Those guys that were with Trump are actual beneficiaries of something they've been promised for 30 years by your party, Mr. Axelrod, that you never delivered on. Trump is running rings around these people if you want to know the truth, and they know it. And this is the best they can do to try to keep other people from seeing it. You know, I hope when Trump meets with Kim Jong-un, he can do something besides stare at that bad haircut. If I met with the guy, I wouldn't be able to stop staring at that bad haircut. At any rate. What? What? No, nah, Trump's is a... No, not nah, Trump's... Well, Trump has a bad comb over. This guy is a bad haircut. This is just... Look at that. You, you realize he wants to look that way. That's what you... Like people that wore two-tone green leisure suits in the 70s in Kmart, they thought they looked cool. This guy thinks he looks good.